Welcome to Arts and Minds Online. And this is session number 18, I believe. Uh, we've been at this for, for 18, well, more than weeks because we don't meet every week. But anyway, welcome to Arts and Minds Online. Uh, and we're gonna continue with our road trip across Canada. Uh, we've been doing this now for a while and, and I've had fun doing the road trip. It's coming to an end, it needs to, because we need soon to pack up and head home before the snow flies. So uh, today we're, we have reached the West Coast and we're in beautiful British Columbia. Uh, and my gosh, there's a lot, a lot uh, that could be painted from beautiful British Columbia. It's probably our postcard province, I guess. Uh, mountains, uh, coastline, the sea, uh, wonderful uh, skiing uh, villages, uh, Whistler comes to mind, um, fishing villages as well. It's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful province. Uh, lots of hiking, lots of trails, um, um, cities, Vancouver, uh, Victoria, lots of other cities as well. So, with all of that, I could not choose. I could not come up with, with a scene that I wanted to do from beautiful British Columbia. So I thought, well, there is an icon that's kind of associated with BC. And that's the totem pole, um, sort of uh, indigenous to the, to the Pacific uh, Northwest coast of Canada. So that's what I thought we would do today, uh, a, to a totem pole. Um, they were first created by uh, the First Nations people and carved out of uh, red cedar trees. Uh, the, 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 some of them, we think of them as being tall, tall, magnificent. Some of them were not so tall, uh, but ones that I've seen, you look way, way up uh, to see the top, the top of the totem pole because cedar trees were, <coughs> excuse me, very tall. Um, originally, I understand that the carvings were were quite simple. The, the the carvings were done, and there wasn't a lot of detail put on them. But over time, more detail was added, more color, more painting on them instead of just just the wood. The the what's carved into them uh, are images which sort of represent uh, could represent the clan, could represent a family. Usually has animals perhaps depicted in it, uh, might have birds depicted in it, uh, people, events in people's lives, sometimes real events, and sometimes um, sort of mythical events. Totem poles don't always represent the animal and the people exactly as they are. Some of the animals that, are, um, that were often carved into totem poles were uh, bear, uh, fox, uh, frogs, uh, eagles as well. Um, anyway, as I say, they're, 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 we associate them with, with the coast, the Pacific Northwest coast. They are also in parks now in, in British Columbia. There are some in Stanley Park, a very famous park in Vancouver, and others around as well. And some uh, some that, that we see pictures of now, uh, so um, are quite faded, some of them falling down. They don't last forever. Uh, there's a, there's a, a lifetime for how long a totem pole is going to stand, but um, the one that we're doing today is, is looking pretty, pretty fresh. <laughs> Probably the most, I would think, the ones that come to mind to me, uh, most famous ones for me, are the ones that are on Haida Gwaii. And I think uh, they've become Become known by people through, you know, I've not visited Haida Gwaii and not a lot of people have, but they become known through uh, paintings of them, particularly by um, Emily Carr. So that's what I know about totem poles, and that's what we're going to do today. Uh, this is the totem pole we're going to do. Well, this is a totem pole I did. You might not want to do this particular one. Um, not a lot in the way of materials today. I did this with just plain paper. I did it with, with I, I used a pencil, a pencil for, for making my sketch, uh, and just colored pencils. Uh, 
Um, when I started to do this, I tried first with watercolor. It didn't, it didn't lend itself to watercolor. Uh, you, you can try it and uh, see if it works for you or, or any other kind of paint, but I think it, it lends itself to, to colored pencils or markers. In any case, so not much in the way of materials today, if you're doing this, um, plain paper, a pencil, and colored pencils. So pause the video now and gather up your materials and get ready to go. Okay, let's take a look at the reference for a sec. Um, As I mentioned, there, there, there are images of, of animals or, or perhaps people. Uh, sometimes there's this combination of, of an animal and a person in, in one image. They're not sort of real to real life always. So in this one, there's the figure at the top, which I, I, I couldn't decide. I've taken these from images that I've seen, by the way. So, uh, and and you, you can look up lots of images on, on uh, Google as well. But, the ears kind of led me th to think that it might be a bear. Uh, but because there are wings on this one, I wondered if also it might be an eagle because it sort of had a, a beak like an eagle. So I'm not sure. Uh, this figure, this elongated figure, uh, looks uh, like a person, uh, but it seems to have limbs, like the arms and the legs, more like an animal. Uh, maybe even a frog in this case. So uh, again, this is one of these sort of mythical uh, creatures that is half human, half animal perhaps. The figure at the bottom, I think looked very much like a fox with its long, narrow face. Uh, and it also has arms, as you can see when you get a closer look at, at the reference. All of these figures had, large enormous eyes and with eyebrows quite prominent eyebrows as well on the wings uh, I just put in some um, just some symbols uh, so half a moon um, this is just just an oblong shape so in here um, just just whatever you like just just colors the thing about it is you want you want to add as much color as as you can the colors on this with the eyes I use the turquoise um, with this brown yellow brown I did a lot of that because I wanted it to, to 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 resemble what would have been the red cedar tree okay without perhaps without paint on it as a mouth on this one with a painted red. Um, and I used a lot of uh, purple on this one as well, which I mixed up some, I, I, I said some red crayon, uh, colored pencils, I'm sorry, red colored pencils and then some blue over top of it to, uh, to come up with a purple. So that's our reference. All right, and, and you will see that from time to time as we go through. Um, I, I, we have a couple of line drawings. Uh, this this line drawing, which I would like you to do first, is just showing very very basic shapes that you will build on when you when you draw your symbols on yours. So um, do the I did it with a marker, so it would stand out and you could see it. But you should do it with pencil, fairly faint, so because you're going to rub some of this out. So I started with just a, a, a square box at the top. Then I did that elongated shape to just show that. And then a less elongated, but um, not square, uh, other shape down at the bottom. And then I just sketched in a shape of wings on the side. So my suggestion is that you, you take, take a minute or two and with your pencil and paper, uh, just draw these shapes. Again, it doesn't matter the size. This is an eight and a half by 11, just piece of, of uh, printed paper, print paper. So uh, it's, it's sort of a nice size for, for this uh, project. Um, so take, take a minute or two and just draw those, those very simple shapes and then come back.
you're back. <laughs> uh, now, there we go. This is what we're going to do. We're going to add on to those, those simple shapes. And I know that I'm not going to necessarily bring this any further because um, her mom will take a picture, use a picture to show you on the screen as well. But let's just take a look at what's done here. I added uh, the drawings that you saw on the reference, but I encourage you so if, if you don't like these, if you would like to do other animals or people, people to represent your family or your history, do it that way. Uh, if I were going to do mine, there'd certainly be a cat on there, for example. So uh, you can do whatever, you know, this is your totem pole. So uh, think how you would like it to represent you right? or, or use these symbols if you like. Um, put in some designs, half moon, stars, whatever designs you want here. You can also, if you don't want to put in like this, these body parts here, just put some shapes in there or just color. Right? Just, it doesn't have to look like this. Totem poles, there's no two, there's no two alike. So um, um, I, I encourage you to, um, to make it your own totem pole. Um, and you know, we started with we started with this line drawing of the sh of of the shapes. Obviously, when you start to do it, you're going to go <laughs> you're going to draw outside the box. <laughs> you're going to go outside the box with some of these. Eh? Uh, but that was just to give you uh, a rough outline. Right? And then with the lines that were there that you don't want, you can just just erase those. This is the main feature of what you're going to do today. So I want you to take some time now and work on, um, it, this will be up, uh, but take time on, on, on making your totem pole yours and experiment with that a little bit. Okay, so leave you with that for, for a few minutes and, uh, and then come back. Okay, I'm going back to the reference. This is the reference now. Now, I'm going to color another one today because there's really, it's not necessary for me to do that. I don't need to show you brush strokes or anything. So, as I say, I've just used colored pencil with this, blended some, uh, and I don't want to necessarily influence your color choice. So uh, I'd like you to make it your own creative totem pole. So I'm just going to leave the coloring for you. Um, but one thing I would request is that when you have it done, um, send us a photo and uh, we, I mean, because I'd love to see what you did with creating your own totem pole. And that's it for British Columbia. This is this is what I, what we're going to use for our British Columbia postcard. So next time uh, we're going to be in the uh, in the Arctic, and uh, we'll do one more in the Arctic, and then we'll find our way back home from our cross Canada trip. So that's it for today. See you next time.